at the camera. Hello, everybody. Hello, Facebook. Hey, how y'all doing today? Nick and Nick. Nick is tired, and Joseph is <laughs> shy. So today, I just wanted to come on here because there's some great things that are happening. For one, we're gonna talk to Nick about his part of I'm not in remission. I'm healed. But before we get started, we're just going to talk a little bit with Joseph because he wants to do what he wants to do and Can I leave. Last? You want to stay in here the whole time? Mommy, I'm like Not really. So many of you all saw my post today where I talked about Joseph receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And so that's something that, don't be shy. That's something we have been talking about for a long time. He's been seeking the Holy Spirit for the gift of tongues. He's been asking the Lord to fill his, his mouth with tongues. And so this morning as I got up and I was praying, I said, Lord, you know, I'm believing and I'm standing on God's word for my son to experience the baptism of speaking in tongues. And so we came here in the prayer room and we began to pray. We began to worship we begin to just thank God and the Lord began to move. And Joseph is going to kind of tell you all how he felt. He was a little nervous, but one of the things that I believe that he had to do was open his mouth and begin to thank God and begin to believe. And so one of the things he shared with me today was what you said it was, your, the greatest what? One of the you got to speak up. One of the greatest moments of my life. And why was it the greatest moment, you think? Because I speak up. not many people experience that. Yeah. And so he had been seeking the Lord for a long time for just, and it was baby tongues. And one of the things that he told me, he said, I was worried about, what What did you, what were you worried about? How, how would I sound? How you was going to sound. He was worried about how he was going to sound. He was also Concerned about what? What is what you concerned about? You were. He had a little fear about how he would sound. He had a little fear about. Um, he he told his dad when he came home. He said, "Am I gonna sound like a an animal?" <laughs> <an> animal. <laughs> hey, Prophet Chris. He was worried about. He said, "Am I gonna sound like an animal?" And one thing that I want to just strike down is the spirit of comparison. So many times we hear people or see people doing things a certain way. Even my husband, he was talking about when he first experienced speaking in tongues, he, his first thing was, how am I going to sound? So one of the things with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, we are completely out of control. It's Holy Spirit. It's the Lord doing the work and providing a gift for us to speak. And so Joseph is, is excited and he just wants to encourage other parents to continue to believe. And, and one of the things that God told me um, that I learned, all of my children, my, me and my husband have five children. Three of them I witnessed um, at an early age, like before they were teenagers, um, speaking in tongues. And one thing I realized with them is they were taught religion. They were taught to go to church. They were taught to shout. They were taught to dance. They were taught to do all these different things, but they were never taught relationship. And so what God was telling me today, he said, yes, now he's experienced the, the um, gift of speaking in tongues. I want you to teach him relationship with my children. I taught them, okay, pray at a certain time, you know, praise God, shout, dance, but I never taught them relationship. And one of the reasons why they were never taught relationship, because I was never taught relationship. I grew up in a church that talked about uh, what you can't do, what you can do. And so I was so stuck on those things that I never took time out to spend with God. And so in this season, I encourage you, teach your children how to spend time with God. I'm already talking to him about idols. He loves wrestling. And I say, God is a jealous God. He don't want nothing before you. And so even though my kids are older, they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at a, at a, a late age. God said, you and your, your his father and his mother is the first experience. They are the first teachers. And so if he see me talking and, and having a relationship with God, 
then it's going to teach him how to talk and have a relationship with God. My older children didn't see that. They saw mommy struggling with fornication. They saw mama struggling with lust. And not saying that he's not going to see a struggle, but I didn't take that time out with my older kids to, to talk to them because I didn't know. I didn't know about deliverance. I didn't know about uh, uh, casting demons out and all these different things. All I knew was to do what I was taught. And so in this season, God is raising up our young people to be, to be generational curse breakers. They are prophets. This young boy, this young man right here can hear God for himself now at a young age. He just turned 10 on Sunday. And I'm just excited about his future. I'm excited about the sensitivity that he has for the things of God and how he loves people and how he's compassionate. And so God was letting me know, teach him, train him, talk to him about obeying the voice of the Lord. Talk to him about sin. One of the things I like about in our um in the thing that we stuck that we bought for him for homeschool, it talks about Bible stuff. It brings the Bible and related to real life experiences. And so when I was growing up, we were taught, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. And some of that is true, but relationship is so important. You can have a father in your life, but if you never talk to your father, if you never spend time with your father, if you never ask your father questions and, and, and they teach you anything, you actually don't have nothing but a title, a person in your life that's a title. And in this season, God wants relationship. And so at this time, Joseph don't know it, but we're going to touch Joseph, me and his father, and we're going to come in agreement for all children to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to receive the speaking in tongues, because it's a promise. The Bible says in the last days, he will pour out his flesh on all, and our sons and daughters shall prophesy. And so we're speaking that into the atmosphere right now, that our sons and our daughters, no matter how old or young, they've been shown the rubber by suya, no matter how old or young they are, they shall prophesy. And they shall speak, they shall dream, they shall have visions in the name of Jesus. So, Joseph, I know you're nervous and you didn't plan this, but I want you to close your eyes and I want you to pray for your generation to, to be able to receive the Holy Spirit and to believe, um, to, to, to have that same miraculous spirit um, experience that you had. So, me and Daddy are here and we're going to agree with you, okay? So close your eyes and speak loud. And you know how I taught you to pray, Father God? Okay, go ahead. Father God, I pray that you fill all people with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I ask that you fill them with speaking in tongues, Father God. I ask that you let them have the the feeling that I had this morning, Father God, I ask that you just fill people and turn them back to you, Father God, in the yes. name of Jesus, I just pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Joseph is gone, so now <laughs> we're going to talk. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit, so y'all see my PPK sitting up here with me? So we're thanking God. So he prayed. We come in agreement for all of our children to, to have not only the, the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, but also to be able to be to walk in obedience, to be life changers, to be generational changers. I truly believe that our generation is not lost. I truly believe that if we stick together as we parent and be led by Holy Spirit, how God wants us to do, our children can will do the unspeakable. The Bible says that, that we're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and think. And I have that same desire and expectation for our children. I don't care how old our children are or how young they are. God can use them in a great and mighty way. So y'all, guess what? This is the good part. So this is the last week. And I'm just excited about what God is doing in our lives. This is the last week for pre-orders if you're interested in my book. So today, my husband, I had to ask him, y'all, because he's not a Facebook person. 
He's not a Facebook person. <laughs> He's not a Facebook person. So I had to like ask him like three. I'm like, babe, I want you to come on here and talk about your experience. So it, this, a lot of people may not know. So I'm not in remission. I'm healed is a book that really talks about our experience that we went through um, during our time in North Carolina. Me and my husband had just um, remarried. Um, and we hadn't been married maybe a year. Joseph was a year old. And um, around November 2011, I started having experiences that something was wrong. And so um, it turned out to be cancer. Uh, turned out to be um, a, a rare type of cancer. And I was given a 50-50 chance of living. And so one of the things that um, I told my husband when I <laughs> we talked about it, because, you know, he was a babe in Christ. I was still going through some of my things in deliverance. Um, I thought he was going to leave, y'all. I thought he was going to leave. I really did. And so there's a chapter in the book that talks about a husband's strength. And I'm going to read one of the reviews that I um, that was shared. It said, the chapter, a husband's strength. I love how Nick captured both the beauty and the challenging time that God has brought him and his family through uh, for Nick to grow in love and not in bitterness in such a trying time is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so that was one of the things that we really had to grow in was love. But I want you to share like some of the things that you felt like when you first found out about the cancer. Well, well, when I first found out about the cancer, um, of course I was scared. Not for me, but you know, the first thing that came to my mind was um, my son's mother. You know, that's the first thing that came to my mind. You know, um, like I say, uh, I was just thinking about him, you know, the consequences or, you know, whatever. But uh, one thing about the uh, journey or the experience that we went through or, or what I went through, um, it made me a stronger person, you know, as a man, you know, in faith and, um, you know, um, spiritual wise, you know, and, and you know, it, it humbled me. You know, it brought me closer to the Lord, you know, and, um, you know, it was a rough time in my life, but um, I thank God, you know, that he was in my life and um, helped me got through the journey. Yeah. And so one of the things that, that we talk about is we were behind in our rent like seven months. Maybe. Yeah. It was a lot, y'all. We were behind in our rent and, um. You know, my husband at the time, he was the only one working and he wasn't making a lot. Um, we were getting income from other sources as well, but we were in North Carolina at the time. We didn't have no family there. We had our our, it was just our church family, you know, but it was really a challenging time. And so one of the things that Nick talks about in the book is how he had to trust God in a different way because he went from me helping with the bills to everything being on him. He went from working to not working. Along with along with going with uh you know the um uh, a lot of other challenges you know that was going on in life you know dealing with teenagers and you know Joe being a baby you know she was you know going through what she was going through you know I just had to be stronger and I just had to you know continue to just ask the Lord to you know give me strength and wisdom and knowledge you know there was times where I wanted to give up but you know I couldn't do that you know. That was, that was not even an option. You know? One of the things that I did not, I find out later on, like I was, you know, be about to cry. And it wasn't because I thought I was going to die because God had built my faith up. But it was because um, I just was feeling a little overwhelmed. But he didn't want me, he wouldn't let me cry, y'all. But I find out later on <laughs> that he wouldn't let me cry because he didn't want to start crying. I, I would never let her see me break down, you know, because like I said, I mean, I, I had my moments, but it, it it was when I was alone, you know, you know, because I had to be strong and, you know, I, I couldn't let, you know, her see me being weak or whatever, so, but I did have my moments and like I say, it, it was rough, you know, I felt like, basically, I felt like I was in the wilderness and, um, you it know, <laughs> like I said, I felt like I was alone, you know, it, it was just me and her, no family, you know. Yeah. 
and and it it was one of them things where um I think it gave him a chance to see what God had in him because he had to do some things that he never done before like taking the kids to school and you know making sure I was for you know because for for a long time I couldn't even pick up Joseph you know they had to pick him up put him in my lap you know all these different things that had to occur but one thing that I, I that I really appreciate when um I saw the chapter that he wrote in the book is he never gave up on God no like his faith got stronger got stronger and I I I, I constantly encourage her when she was having her moments. You know, I was like, you know, you, you more spiritual than me. You know, your faith should be stronger than mine. And, you know, I just kept encouraging her. Yeah. You know. Because he didn't really know a lot of the things that were going on because he'll be up there, you know, supporting me. But even now, I have to encourage him, babe, find out information. Like, we were just at the doctor uh, uh, yesterday for my son. Just a regular checkup. And I was encouraging him to fill out <laughs> paperwork. Because, you know, if something ever happened, you, you want to make sure your mate knows the different things. And so, um, you know, times where I wanted to kind of share my heart with him, he was like, listen, you had, my husband cut my hair, y'all. My hair. Um, she cried. <laughs> that, listen, out of everything that I went through, I think that was one of the hardest parts because my hair had grown so long. It was longer than it ever been. And I had, you know, that we were in the office and it was like, well, you gonna lose your hair. And I was like, I declare I'm not gonna lose my hair. I had, I was like, I ain't losing my hair. And y'all had my hair braided up. It was sold up. And um, I was taking the braids out and all of a sudden patches, patches started coming out. Yeah. And I just encouraged, I was like, you know, this hair is gonna grow back, you know, but you yeah, know, she was actually, she was cute though after, you know, <laughs> she got her hair cut. So, so yeah. he cut my hair. He actually, you know, shave my hair bald. And so that's one of the moments where I truly knew my husband loved me. I knew he loved me, but because of everything that we had been through and we were just coming back, like you said, our kids, our older kids were acting out. It's like the enemy was mad about our reconciliation. The enemy was really mad and he was throwing all blows like one of our kids will act out they'll they get okay the, the other one will act out and then the other, other one will act out and at the same time we're dealing with financial issues we're dealing with you know having to drive an yeah. hour and a half to treatment you know he had to leave me in the hospital and come back leave me in the hospital at Chapel Hill and then come back to Goldsboro because we didn't have nobody to, to, to right. make sure our children were okay so to see the strength that he has and the things that um, he did and didn't do really let us know. And when I tell you all, we talk about in this book how God provided for us. I remember telling the Lord, I remember coming to him and, and we only had $20 left to our name. And I said, babe, I didn't know nothing about sewing, you know, just learning about sewing. And I said, God said for us to give this, sow this. I think we gave, sold that $20 seed. Two days later, somebody came and put $200 in our hand. And we had the money, y'all. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about how God opened the door and, and paid for Talked about gas. Our landlord. I feel like, you know, our landlord, you know, I feel like, you know, God put him in my life at, at the um, right time. Because like I said, we was behind in our rent. And he used to come over, you know what I'm saying? He used to ask me how she was doing everything, but he never, ever asked me about the rent. He was like, man, how can I ask you about your, your rent, you know what I'm saying? You know, when, when y'all going through what y'all going through, he said, man, when I met you, you know, you, you seem like a pretty nice guy. He said, I, I'm not even worried about that. But one thing about it, I promised him, I said, man, I'm going to give you every dime that I owe you. And, I, and, we, and did. I did. we did. I did. We did. And I'm telling you, I remember... Him coming over to fix something in the house, our landlord, and he is a godsend. I've never met a man, a man of God like that before. And I remember him fixing something. And I, I asked him, I said, you know, Mr. Lockman, why is it that, you know, you don't ask us by our rent? He said, what kind of man would I be to see y'all going through what y'all going through 
He said, I want, I treat people how I want them to treat me. And I'm telling you, I left out of the room where he is. And I went and cried and lifted up my hands because that's favor. That's the favor of God. And I'm telling you, this book just talks about how God not only walked me through, but I had to deal with a lot of my demons. I was still dealing with having, I talk about having an adultery mindset. I talk about how, you know, I had to forgive. Forgiveness is one of the main steps to healing. I don't care what nobody else tell you. If you don't forgive, Healing will not come forth. I don't care if you're talking about healing for your personal life, healing for your marriage, healing for your body. You have to forgive. And so I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive my husband. I had to forgive people. Some people I didn't get in touch with, I had to forgive. But I want to come on here just really quick and share just how God is moving. Um, even as we talked about Joseph receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit today and, and just speaking in tongues, it just let me know that God is giving us another chance to be better parents. You know, showing us there's different things that we've discovered that we didn't always do right with our, our first, I say first set of kids because they grown, you know, they in their twenties. Our oldest is almost 30. And so I believe that God has given us a second, second chance to do what we should have did as parents earlier. Cause we were young. We, didn't um he was doing what he wanted to do and I was doing what I wanted to do and it was just so many things that 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 was being done and you think after divorce being divorced for 10 years and my husband you know he was going on with his life doing his thing and I was I was believing God to be reconciled but I was still struggling and fighting it but it got to a point where I just had one thing about God he knows your heart he knows those that want to obey. He knows those that want to um, walk in truth. And so he, he didn't give me no peace. He didn't give me any peace. And so if you know anybody that's dealing with unforgiveness, if you know anybody that's dealing with any type of sin, if you know anybody that, that's dealing with any kind of disease, it doesn't have to be cancer. Let them know about this book. When I When I decided to write this book, it wasn't for monetary gain. I told the Lord, I want to bless people. I didn't know why I journaled my whole experience. I wrote down every experience I had. Mm -hmm. I had some pictures that I took, but this one said he deleted them. Because I try to make things uh, funny. And so it was pictures where I would have my wig caught to the side and my hair was bald. It was just a lot of stuff because I wanted to lighten the load. But I'm... Not in remission, I'm healed. It's a declaration that I speak over everything. Everything. And so, you know, right now we're just going to get ready to go. We're going to, hey, Krista, hey, y'all. Um, if you know anybody that's that's dealing with any type of sickness, I don't care if it's COVID, blood pressure, diabetes, let them know about this book. Let them know. And even if you don't let them know, let them know the first step to healing is Forgiveness. Forgive, unforgiveness is cancer. It eats at you. And it gets you, it keeps you in a place where you can't move forward. And so without forgiveness, you can't move forward. You can't move to the next level. And so every time I would get on my knees and ask the Holy Spirit, why am I here? Why am I why am I still bleeding? Because that's the type of cancer I had. It was a bleeding tumor. It attacked my body. And so God would give me instructions on what to do. And so we're just going to believe for anybody that's, that knows anybody that's dealing with cancer, that's dealing for any sickness or disease, not only believing for their healing, but believe them for a support system that whoever they come in contact, God supernaturally led us to people that poured in our life, mm -hmm. that sold in our life, that gave, mm -hmm. that gave us that support that we didn't have, that we probably would have had. But now that I'm thinking about it, we, we, I feel like we had a lot. Even though we didn't have our family there, we had a lot. We I, had a lot. And I also feel like I said, well, they say God bring people in your life, you know, at the right time. And like I said, it was a lot of people that came in our life, you know, that we never would have expected to be there for us, but they was there at the right time. So God knows what he's doing. And um, like I said, he, he had everything under control. 
we just had to believe in him and, you know, keep our faith. And, you know, like I said, it was not one time that I was worried or stressed or anything. You know, like I said, when I first found out, I just told the doctor, do whatever best. That's that's all I told him. I wasn't worried about no finances, no job, no nothing. All I did, all I told him, do what you got to do for her. And we are here eight and a half years later telling the story. And so I'm so thankful for what God has done and what he's going to do and what he's continuing to do. So we're going to pray and let y'all go. So this is the last week for pre-orders to get a signed copy, but the Kindle version will be available as well as the book will be available to order on Amazon on October 10th. And get ready for October 10th, y'all. I can't share it right now, but get ready. Hey, Lisa, I can't share it right now. My husband don't even know. But October 10th is the release date of the book, as well as God has some other things that's getting ready to take place. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness. Father God, we release the blood of Jesus over this live, oh God to bring healing, God, healing to our bodies, healing to our mind, healing to our spirits, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, oh God, for the testimonies, oh God, God, of, of marriages being reconciled, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the testimonies, oh God, for cancer drying up in the name of Jesus. It has to bow, oh God. And Father God, we thank you right now for the gift of tongues being released over our children, oh God. Father God, we thank you right now for the spirit of prophecy moving forward, oh God, throughout the earth, throughout our, our lives, for our children, oh God, for our children's children. We thank you that they are growing up to be generational curse breakers in this hour and in this season, oh God. Father God, we pray for spouses, whether it be husbands or wives, oh God, that whatever their spouse may be dealing with, whether it be sickness, whether it be job loss, oh God, whether it be doubt or fear, oh God, yes. God, we speak, God, that they will rise up and be that support system that you're calling in these days, oh God, and in this time, oh God, they will never feel alone, they will never feel without, they will never feel confused because you are with them, and so Father God, we thank you right now. And we give you praise for everything that you have done yes. and everything that you're going to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we thank y'all for tuning in. We just want to come on here real quick to share um, a chapter. It's a chapter. I think it's the 11th chapter of the book, A Husband's Strength. Yeah. Yeah. And so my husband talks about what he went through. Because we always hear about what one side of the story, whether it's sickness, whether it's divorce, whether it's separation, whether it's financial we always hear one side and so i think it's important for us to hear both sides of what each person so if you want it it's available just um message me or go to my link on my page and um sign up and so we will see you all the next time and have a good you. night thank you everybody all right see you later